Dear Joseph, you're the reason I do what I do. Ever since you were born, I have been a better person, and you have put me in a better direction. I feel grateful that you're my little brother. The fact that I have just one person to look up to, look up to me, it's fine for me. You also have been my motivation, and the support you have given me is unspeakable. You have made me a better person. Love, Lionel. Dear Mom, thank you for all the support over the past four years of my football career. Between taking me to practice every day, coming to all my games, and washing all those filthy clothes every day, I know it takes a lot to do everything that you've done to support me, and I know that it's helped me make who I am today. I know you will keep supporting me through the rest of my career, so thank you, Mom. It means the world to me. Love, Max. Dear Grandma, thank you for doing more than needed to shape the man I am today. I am grateful for the countless hours that you put into making me a better, making me better, whether it's taking me to practice or making me do my homework. Love, Aaron. Dear Mom and Dad, thank you for all the support you have given me over the years. You always had confidence in me to be the best. I cannot have accomplished anything that I did without you. You being there for me no matter what is, the com is a comforting feeling and gives me the confidence to achieve all my goals. You have made me the man I am today and the man I am striving to become. Sincerely, Ryan. To do your best is basically leaving it all on the field, giving everything you have. I think even uh, some of us doubted our capabilities and, and what we could accomplish this season. We defied all odds. We, we had hope, we had a spark. It's been a pleasure playing with them for the past four years and I'll definitely remember it throughout the rest of my life. You have to come in with a mentality that you have to win. You, you can't be all right with losing. Hendrick doesn't lose, as simple as that. That's what we do best is just win. To be part of a team, it means you have to trust everyone that's on the field with you because they're trusting you to do your job. And if you don't do your job, you're letting everyone down. So to be a team, you have to win as a team and lose as a team. No one enjoys losing, but losing builds character. So once someone loses, everyone just gets, everyone gets closer to each other. But being part of a team, it's, you're part of a team throughout your whole life, at work, at school football program, everything. Just life is basically teamwork to succeed. A lot of stuff that I, I say to the kids is, I mean, it's really not worth uh, doing something unless you're gonna give it your all. What's the, what's the point of, uh, you know, either playing a sport or uh, for me coaching, if I'm not gonna, you know, be as competitive um, and put the work in as, as, as what the kids are doing. So I, f I figure you can't really uh, preach what you're not practicing. So as far as, uh, you know, the good attitude and the work ethic, it's, uh, it all comes down to pretty much the seniors um, and how hard they work and their willingness to, uh, to give everything you have to be successful. No one expected us to win. Uh, the media doubted us. Um, I think even uh, some of us doubted our capabilities and, and what we could accomplish this season. We were doing so-so, LaSalle was undefeated, and uh, the Warwick Beacon said right out in our paper, which is the Hendrickon local paper, they said that no one will beat LaSalle this year. And so we printed that off and posted it up in our locker room as motivation to beat LaSalle. A Maximilian Heinzelman, number 77, left tackle. What does it mean to you to be a lineman? It means to be the biggest dude on the field, you know? It means 
keeping everybody else safe on the team, you know. I don't know. Feels good. Um, Got to give it to Brannigan, I think. Yeah. Brannigan's pretty funny. Everything was a joke this season. A lot of, uh, a lot of funny stuff went on. He's, uh, I, don't, I don't know how he was a quarterback this year. <laughs> he was, he, he's a clown. Every time he would call a, 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 a QB sneak and, and, and the line would know when he was going to do it, you know, like fourth and one or something, he'd just come to the huddle and be, nah, 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 I'm on, ready, break. <laughs> and then we'd go and we'd just run a QB sneak. He'd say, blah, 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 ready, break. They break a huddle and run a play. It's like, how do you know what's going on? And the, they knew what the play was because it's something that he would do all season and, and what it was going to be. Uh, it was funny. Probably every day during practice, um, we'd be running laps or something, and you'd see balls be flying from the back of the pack all the way to the front, trying to hit kids in the head. And <laughs> it's probably one of the funniest stuff. It was, it was when he, Brandon got a kid. Brandon got uh, Marco Del Vecchio. He was, uh, Brandon was on like the 40, and, and uh, we call him Ed, Marco, was, on the, was in the other end zone. And uh, Brandon just hucked it. And I dome pieced him right off the side of the head. That was probably one of, one of the funniest moments uh, of the season. He was the leader that everyone looked up to, but at the same time, when things got serious, uh, we got a little tight as far as uh, personalities. Uh, when things weren't going well, Ryan was always a guy that, that uh, can make things light. I mean, to the point where coaches, at some point, when we wanted to be serious, we had to look away because of the kid. He just made you laugh. What I like most is proving people wrong, like that, that paper that said that we, can, we don't have a chance to win. That really motivated us to work hard and prove that person wrong, prove the state wrong that we're better than you think we are. I had kids throughout the school just saying, you know, you're going to win? And it's like, yeah, we're going to win, but you, you don't know. You don't know how to answer that. You, know? you, you just hope that you're prepared enough to, uh, to make it happen. Our defense needed to come up one time, and they did. The drive, uh, was something that I don't think any of us will ever, ever forget. It was actually uh, pretty scary. Um, the series before that on offense, we went three and out, we punted the ball. And to be honest, I thought that was our last chance to, to get back in the game. I was like, we're screwed, we're not, we're not getting this. And throughout that whole game, we were gassed. There were some guys on defense that played with both ways. It was first and 25, and our coach just says, post, post, arrow. <laughs> was like. Where the hell does he get these plays from? <laughs> it wasn't much thinking. It was, it's all really kind of a blur. We needed to perform the best that we, we ever did, and we just did it without thinking. Post, post, arrow. And uh, I ran the inside post. And as soon as I broke from my post cut, I knew I was gonna get the ball. There was no way he couldn't throw it to me. I was wide open. Uh, burned the kid. Burned him, Jack Collins burned him. Um, and uh, caught it over the middle. Um, and got drilled. And all I can remember was just hold on to the ball, tuck it as tight as I could. When he caught it, he got popped. I mean, you'll see it. He got popped. He laid on the ground for a couple seconds. He got up, he limped off the field, but knew what he did. I mean, the sideline, the, the kids, uh, the fans in the stands, it just erupted. I wasn't gonna fumble this ball. There was no way I was, was letting go to this one. So, tucked it, fell. I could not, could not breathe afterwards, got the wind knocked out of me, but played my part, got the catch, moved the chains. Honestly, I told Brandigan after the game, I didn't know that those were fourth down plays. I, the only thing that was in my mind was the time. Lionel's taller than the corner, so I gave him, I gave him room to catch it, but I didn't give him that much room in the end zone, and he just he just got his toe in, in the line. And it couldn't have been any more perfect. When Brandigan threw the ball, it was just me and the ball, I didn't even know he was there. I just jumped over him, 
caught it, my left foot was in bounds. And I just laid on, the back, laid on my back, just watching the referee throw a yellow flag for the pass interference, I don't know who it was on. And I see him put his hands up. And I looked over and I, I saw the re <laughs> what his arms looked like this, and I, I couldn't even explain the relief uh, and the excitement that uh, I had at that point. The pride that um, these guys felt, um, they'll probably never forget for the rest of their lives. It's just a memory that's just, it's, it's incredible that, that day, December 3rd. Winning the state championship can last, the feeling can last forever of that success and that, that bond that you had with your team and how much hard work that we put in in the summer, like from June, July, August, all the way through till December when we won the state championship. It's, that's a lot of time and a lot of, a lot of good times that we had with our friends and um, working hard all year. That, that, that memory lasts forever. I'm just confident in that I have, I have good moral standings and have a good character, so that'll take me somewhere in life. You have to be confident in life to know that you can't let others step on you because you have to be ready to take a position. If it has, a, it has to be a job or being a father one day, you have to be confident that you could handle that. You know, so you have to be ready in life. It starts with that helps create their character to become that person who will put that extra time in and uh, improve on their work ethic and, and uh, come together as a team. It's, you know, because if you don't have that, you know, that character, then that other stuff isn't going to follow. I mean, it's a tradition. It's a legacy you've got to live up to. You set your own, uh, your own path, you know what I mean? You, um, you pave the road ahead, keep it going. Don't forget where you come from or, or who you are. You're Andrew